I hope you're doing really, really well today. My name is Leah and this is my story time. Now, do you remember yesterday we were talking about our favourite authors, weren't we? And we said that an author is a person who writes the words in stories and books. Now, today somebody has got in touch with me and they have asked me to read a story with their favourite character in the story. Now a character is a person or it can be a creature that appears in a story and they can be real or they can be made up. Now this little girl is called Sadie. Hello Sadie and she's got a little brother Rory. Hello Rory. Hello Sadie and Rory. And their favourite character is in today's story. In fact he's in lots and lots of stories because he goes on lots of of adventures. I'm going to give you a clue. See if you can guess. He wears a red hat. He has a big shiny nose, a black nose. He has two fluffy ears. He comes from darkest Peru and he loves to eat marmalade sandwiches. <gasps> It's this character here. He's called Paddington. Now, have you heard of Paddington Bear before? You have. You might have even been lucky enough to see the film, but we love the storybooks here. And Paddington gets up to lots of amazing adventures. So I thought, especially because Sadie and Rory, they really like Paddington Bear, I thought I would read this story today. So I hope you like it. This is called Paddington and it's by Michael Bond and the illustrations are by R.W. Alley. Now don't worry, I will show you the pictures each time I get to the end of the page. So here we go. Paddington by Michael Bond illustrated by R. W. Alley. Mr. and Mrs. Brown first met Paddington on a railway platform. In fact, that was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear, because Paddington was the name of the station. The Browns were waiting to meet their daughter, Judy, when Mr. Brown noticed something small and furry near the left luggage office. It looks like a bear, he said. A bear, repeated Mrs Brown, on Paddington Station. Don't be silly, Henry. There can't be. Ah, oh, but we know better, don't we? <laughs> and there you can see Mr Brown pointing out to Mrs Brown what he can see. A bear on Paddington Station. But Mr Brown was right. It was sitting on an old leather suitcase marked Wanted on Voyage. And as they drew near, it stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said. May I help you? Uh, it's very kind of you, said Mr Brown. But as a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. You're a very small bear, said Mrs Brown. Where are you from? The bear looked around carefully before replying. Darkest Peru. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. <gasps> and there is Pannington raising his hat to say hello. And Mr and Mrs Brown talking to Paddington for the first time. But he's not supposed to be here. He's a stowaway. You don't mean to say you've come all the way from South America on your own, exclaimed Mrs Brown. Whatever did you do for food? Unlocking the suitcase, the bear took out an almost empty jar. I ate marmalade, it said. Bears like marmalade. Mrs Brown looked at the label around the bear's neck. It said, quite simply, please look after this bear. Thank you. And there you can see Paddington showing Mr and Mrs Brown his almost empty glass jar that used to be full of delicious marmalade. I love marmalade. Oh, oh Henry. Henry. 
she cried. We can't leave him here all by himself. There's no knowing what might happen to him. Can't he come home and stay with us? Stay with us? repeated Mr Brown nervously. He looked down at the bear. Uh, would you like that? he asked. That is, he added hastily, if you have nothing else planned. Oh yes, replied the bear. I would like that very much. I've nowhere to go and everyone seems in such a hurry. And there you can see Mr and Mrs Brown talking to Paddington. And everybody is in a bit of a hurry when you go to the train station. That settles it, said Mrs Brown. Now, you must be thirsty after your journey. Mr Brown can get you some tea while I go and meet our daughter Judy. But Mary, said Mr Brown, we, we, we don't even know its name. Mrs Brown thought for a moment. I know, she said. We'll call him Paddington after the station. Paddington. The bear tested it several times to make sure. It sounds very important. Mr Brown tried it out next. Follow me, Paddington, he said. I'll take you to the snack bar. And there you can see, look how busy the train station looks. And Mr Brown is taking Paddington to the snack bar. I love going to the snack bar when I go on a journey. I wonder what they'll get. Mr Brown was as good as his word. Paddington had never seen so many snacks on one tray and he didn't know which to try first. He was so hungry and thirsty, he climbed up onto the table to get a better look. Mr Brown turned away, pretending he had tea with a bear on Paddington Station every day of his life. Henry! cried Mrs Brown when she arrived with Judy. What are you doing to that poor bear? Paddington jumped up to raise his hat and in his haste he trod on a strawberry tart, skidded on the cream and fell over backwards into his cup of tea. What a disaster! And there you can see it all happening. Uh oh! There's Paddington trying out all the snacks and there he is skidding on the strawberry tart. Oh, he is a bit of a mess now. I think we'd better go before anything else happens, said Mr Brown. Judy took hold of Paddington's paw. Come along, she said. We'll take you home and you can meet Mrs Bird and my brother Jonathan. Mr Brown led the way to a waiting taxi. Number 32 Windsor Gardens, please, he said. The driver stared at Paddington. Bears is extra, he growled. Sticky bears is twice as much. And make sure none of it comes off on my interior. It was clean when I set out this morning. Oh dear. It looks like the taxi driver isn't very happy to take a very mucky Paddington. <laughs> oh no, I hope Paddington doesn't make a mess in the taxi. The sun was shining as they drove out of the station and there were cars and big red buses everywhere. Paddington waved to some people waiting at a bus stop and several of them waved back. Oh, it was all very friendly. Paddington tapped the taxi driver on his shoulder. It isn't a bit like darkest Peru, he announced. The man jumped at the sound of Paddington's voice. <gasps> Cream, he said bitterly. Cream and jam all over me coat. He slid the little window shut behind him. Oh dear, Henry, murmured Mrs Brown. I wonder if we're doing the right thing. And there you can see all the wonderful things that Paddington can see in his taxi home. And the taxi driver doesn't look very happy. Cream and jam all over his coat. Oh dear. I wonder if the Browns are doing the right thing. Fortunately, before anyone had time to answer, they arrived at Windsor Gardens and Judy helped Paddington onto the pavement. Now you're going to meet Mrs Bird, she said. She looks after us. She's a bit fierce at times, but she doesn't really mean it. I'm sure you'll like her. 
Paddington. I felt his knees begin to wobble. I'm sure I shall if you say so, he replied. The thing is, will she like me? And there you can see the family arriving at their home, Windsor Gardens. And Mrs Bird and Jonathan are looking out the window. I bet they're wondering what on earth is going on. Goodness gracious, exclaimed Mrs Bird. What have you got there? It's not a what, said Judy. It's a bear called Paddington. And he's coming to stay with us. A bear, said Mrs Bird as Paddington raised his hat. Well, he has good manners. I'll say that for him. I am afraid I stepped on a jam tart by mistake, said Paddington. I can see that, said Mrs Bird. You'd better have a bath before you're not very much older. Judy can turn it on for you. I dare say you'll be wanting some marmalade too. I think she likes you, whispered Judy. And there you can see Paddington meeting Mrs Bird. And he has got very good manners. Look at him raising his hat just here. Oh, I like a bear with good manners. And so does Mrs Bird. Paddington had never been in a bathroom before. And while the water was running, he made himself at home. First of all, he tried writing his new name in the steam on the mirror. Then he used Mr Brown's shaving foam to draw a map of Peru on the floor. It wasn't until a drip landed on his head that he remembered what he was supposed to be doing. He soon discovered that getting into a bath is one thing, but it's quite another matter getting out, especially when it's full of soapy water. Oh dear. Paddington, you're making such a mess in the bathroom. And it appears you're stuck in the bath too. Paddington tried calling out, help, at first in a quiet voice so as not to disturb anyone, then very loudly, help, help. When that didn't work, he began bailing the water out with his hat, but the hat had several holes in it and his map of Peru soon turned into a sea of foam. Suddenly, Jonathan and Judy burst into the bathroom and lifted a dripping Paddington onto the floor. Thank goodness you're all right, cried Judy. We heard you calling out. Fancy making such a mess, said Jonathan admiringly. You should have pulled the plug out. Oh, said Paddington. I never thought of that. Now you can see. What a mess. But it looks like Jonathan quite likes that there's quite a lot of mess in the bathroom. <laughs> I wonder what his mum and dad will say. When Paddington came downstairs, he looked so clean, no one could possibly be cross with him. His fur was all soft and silky, his nose gleamed and his paws had lost all traces of jam and cream. There he is. He does look rather cute, doesn't he? He looks like I want to give him a big, big squishy cuddle. The Browns made room for him in a small armchair and Mrs Bird brought him a pot of tea and a plate of hot button toast and marmalade. Oh, yummy. Oh, I could just eat some marmalade right now. Now, said Mrs Brown, you must tell us all about yourself. I'm sure you must have had lots of adventures. I have, said Paddington earnestly. Things are always happening to me. I'm that sort of a bear. He settled back in the armchair. I was brought up by my Aunt Lucy in darkest Peru, he began. But she had to go into a home for retired bears in Lima. He closed his eyes thoughtfully. And a hush fell over the room as everyone waited expectantly and there you can see everybody waiting to hear Paddington's story they're waiting expectantly 
After a while, when nothing happened, they began to get restless. Mr. Brown tried coughing. Uh, uh, um. Then he reached across and poked Paddington. Well, I never, he said. I do believe he's fast asleep. <laughs> After all that's happened to him, said Mrs. Brown, is it any wonder? And there is Paddington, fast asleep in the armchair. <laughs> He's waiting for another adventure because there are lots of Paddington books when he goes on lots of adventures because he's such a great character. So thank you so much Sadie and Rory. I hope you enjoyed my rendition of Paddington and thank you for asking for your favourite character, a story all about him today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I'll be back next week with some more stories. If you have suggestions just get your grown-ups to get in touch with me and until then take Take care, have a lovely weekend and be kind. I know you will. Bye bye everyone. Bye.